This Jacobean ornate tall boy dresser with bone legs probably goes back to the 1930s and it's one of those pieces that makes you gasp when you see it. That's exactly what happened when my husband and I saw it at the thrift store. But even with that, we talked for 10 minutes making sure that bringing it home was the right move for us since I already have so many pieces to work on waiting for me at home. After much debating, we just couldn't whack away from it. What you're seeing here is a finish that is very worn out and whatever I do to it, I want to make it justice because it's so darn beautiful. So stay tuned. I already wiped down the piece with a powerful degreaser called Simple Green to get rid of the dust, the grime, and now I'm removing the hardware and I'm getting ready to sand the whole piece. I wish I could tell you right now that I'm very firm about my vision for it and that I'm 100% sure what I'm gonna do with it, but the reality is that I do not. I wanna see how it sands first and we're gonna go from there. The way I'm approaching the removal of today's finish is the same way my teacher told me to approach my math test growing up. Get the parts that are the easiest done first and then come back and work on the tough problems. For the easiest parts, I'm using my carbide scraper here. Like who needs a gym when you can get a really good arm workout scraping old varnishes? Along with my orbital surf prep sander. I'm using 120 grit here, making sure that I protect myself from the sanding dust by wearing a mask. Something I think it deserves to be mentioned is that I have condensed 15 hours worth of sanding and scraping this old finish in 4 minutes. So if you see a little more sanding and scraping that you like, my apologies, but this is the reality of today's video. For this next part, I need to warn you that the surf prep sanding system I'm using is extremely powerful. Unless you have tested the power of it on a different piece, I don't recommend sanding curvy areas like the ones I'm doing right here. Just know that I'm sanding with extreme caution with small and gentle taps here. For the places that are harder to reach, I use another Baco brand carbide scraper. The only difference is that this one comes with a triangular attachment and the pointy corners are perfect for 90 degree corners and straight angles. Just one piece of advice when you're using either scraper is to not put too much pressure because this will scratch the wood. So just go gentle with them. For this next sanding stage, I'm using a vendable and squishy foam attachment from Surf Prep that will sand any curved areas without making them flat. And for the rest of the spots that were not reachable with any of the tools that I use today, I use some good old hand sanding. So after spending the past three days sanding for several hours each day, 
cleaning is the moment of truth because this is when i get to see the wood for what really is no wonder they use one single stain color to make the variety of wood veneers they have here the color in the veneer look more cohesive i'm gonna sleep on it and come up with a solution to make this piece more desirable And after I spent all that time sanding, I don't want to cover the wood. I want to use different colors to do an ombre effect. I diluted the paint, one part paint, three parts water. This is going to give me a stain effect. I also have some wet rags on hand because I'm going to be applying the color wash and wiping it off right away. Just for those who might be wondering, an ombre effect is the subtle transition from one color into another. For this piece, I'm obviously starting with the darkest color at the top and gradually as I go down, it's gonna start getting lighter and lighter. For the rest of the colors, I'm not using paint, I'm actually using water-based gel stains. And unfortunately, I didn't have any water-based black stains. And this is why I ended up doing a pink color wash here. darken some of these lighter areas to match the middle section a little more using so. some old-fashioned stain my brush is a little bit wet too makes it easier to apply the stain I like how that looks actually here's a close-up you can see that it matches the side a little bit better rather than that super light color. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind the next color I'll be introducing is a mix of half moonshine and half wooden barrel. All the gel stains that you see me using today are from Lily Moon Paint. I don't remember ever working on another project where I stepped away from it to look at it from the distance to make sure that it was looking good to my eyes as many times as I did with this project here. And part of that is that when a dark and lighter color come together, they make a whole new color. And I wanted to make sure that the color transitions were subtle. One of the things that helps make that transition subtle is to keep the surface wet before you apply the stains because since they are water-based, they dry quickly. And also when you have the darker color, the lighter color come together, in that area where they touch make sure that is extra wet that's gonna make your blending a lot smoother the next water-based gel stain i'm gonna be introducing here is called moonshine one of those times where i took a couple steps back to look at the piece from the distance i saw that the black against the brown transition was too abrupt so i decided to do one application of the old-fashioned stain over the ash color this made the darker color look a little more bronze, therefore softer, which I liked. After applying old-fashioned stain over the paint color wash, I noticed the bottom drawer looked too light. So after spraying it with water, I took an extra fine sanding sheet and sanded some of it back.
I debated what to do with the sides of the dresser, if I should just apply the ash color wash over them, but after thinking about it, I decided that I wanted to see that color blending or amber effect on the sides too. I just made sure that when there was that color transition on the front, it followed to both of the sides. using this oil-based stain from Barathane and I'm just gonna use a foam brush to apply it. I can't wait to show you the whole piece. I've I'm in love. I make sure that the application of this oil-based stain was light. That way, a couple days after it fully dried, I could top coat it with this top coat from Barathane. To apply the top coat, I make sure I loaded my detail finish nozzle from Wagner and applied three coats. Let's take a look back to where we started. And this is how the dresser looks today. Please leave me a comment and let me know what you think of today's transformation. And if you enjoyed today's content, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next furniture flip. I will see you guys next time.